What is the process of a Sursky journey at Fertility Special Texas? You'll start off your journey by coming to visit us here in Dallas. You're able to meet our team and really see what a beautiful center we have. I've had the privilege to take care of thousands of patients and really helping them become parents. As a father of two boys, it really is an amazing experience and I really am honored to be involved with you in this process. I know one of the greatest things that I've done is being a father and I really wish that upon you. I realize, I realize there are a number of different decisions about to be, that need to be made, and we're there really to help you through this, from selecting an egg donor, as well as the screening process for the surrogate, and ultimately decide how many embryos to transfer. We want to do really what is right for you and provide individualized time and care, because every situation has difference. This means we want to make sure you select the right egg donor, as well as um, the right surrogate from the beginning to end. When you come to Dallas to freeze your sperm, you, you will have your medical screening. Yes, Dallas is very centrally located. We have patients from the West Coast, from the East Coast. It's really quite easy to get in and out. After you have a physical exam, you'll have your FDA labs done, the genetic care screening, and then we will freeze the sperm. You will then meet the coordinator who will be with you, the contract as well as the FDA questionnaire. I think you will find that our staff really understands what you're going through and will really walk with you through this process. We have coordinated thousands of surrogacy cases and focus really on success, which is really should be your first consideration. Step two involves selecting an egg donor and creating embryos. We have our own in-house egg donor database, which you are certainly welcome to use. It is more affordable and you don't have to pay an agency fee. We also use a number of different agencies from around the country, and we really have no preference. Once you have selected an egg donor, then she will have a physical examination, blood work, psychological screening. We want to make sure she has really a really clear understanding of what her obligations are. After this, she will then go through legal clearance, and, and then we can start the stimulation. What's involved with the egg donor stimulation? Briefly, she'll start taking birth control pills for approximately 12 to 15 days. She'll then come into our office for a baseline ultrasound to make sure that her she has no ovarian cyst. And then she'll start taking injectable medications 10 to 12 days. She'll have monitoring there in this time. And then she'll be take a trigger shot to prepare for her retrieval. Once we have her eggs, we'll then do fertilization, which we will use ICSI. So let's say you have 20 eggs, for example, 10 would go to you, 10 would go to your partner. These eggs would then be fertilized and the embryos would grow in our laboratory till day five or six. During that time, we can then do genetic testing to see if they're genetically normal and then the embryos are frozen and we get a report back probably about two weeks later. We really wanna be able to select the best embryo. So we do an assessment of the embryo based on how it looks as well as using genetic testing in the embryos because we want you to have the highest chance of success. How do we do this? Well, we're able to look objectively at the cells of the embryo and see how they really are put together. Um, and we look at something called the inner cell mass, which are the cells which give rise to the embryo. And we also look at the trophoectoderm, which are the cells around the embryo. And we grade these for, with an assessment. The second way we do that is to use an analysis is the genetic testing, which is PGD. We, then, we do this by making a little hole in the shell around the embryo, and then we can do the ana genetic analysis. We, we are checking really for abnormalities such as, for example, Down syndrome. And this is really completely related to the quality of the egg and the egg donor. So this is why you um, using a someone of a young age, for example, 20 to 30 years of age. Step three is selecting a surrogate and performing the embryo transfer. And when you select a surrogate, she'll come to our office where she will also go through a medical screening and she'll have blood work and she'll have an ultrasound. She'll also she'll have a um, psychological screening. Usually the surrogacy agencies do a great job of doing initial testing before they come. However, we also would then have them come in when we do the medical screening. We're gonna to wanna to review her prior records. We're gonna look at her prior deliveries and um, make sure she has a really good understanding of the legal contract because in the contract is where it specifies, you know, how many embryos we're gonna transfer and really has a really good understanding of what her obligations are. Of course, when you're selecting a surrogate, usually the surrogate typically has one prior delivery and we wanna be really careful 
in strict regards to selecting a surrogate that, for example, has had several C-sections if you're planning on doing a double embryo transfer. We want to make sure she's in good physical health. And we even might look at the delivery of her babies that she's previously had. The legal contract, again, is not a trivial detail. This is a long contract that is important, and it really specifies what issues, you know, the, what the surrogate needs to do. And again, if you want her to have a very good understanding of this, and then we can proceed with the embryo transfers. One of the things that I think that is important to realize is that once you go through and create embryos, I personally go through and look at the records. And so, for example, when, um, this includes when you're looking at an egg donor as well as a surrogate. And so if, for example, you are picking an egg donor and you're planning on doing split insemination, let's say, and I see that the egg donor, for example, maybe two or three weeks ago, we had an egg donor that had only done like, you know, produced 12 and 14 eggs consistently. And we actually spoke to the intended parent to say, you know what? I think you really should look at picking a different surrogate, a different egg donor. Um, again, we do the same thing when we're looking at a um, surrogate. We review her prior cycles and we make sure that she's a good candidate before we start the process because we want this to work the first time. I know certainly I thoroughly enjoy taking care of guys that are going through this journey because I know you're spending a lot of emotional energy, a lot of physical energy and a lot of financial energy in making this happen. And we want this to happen the first time. Again, thank you.